Hey guys, welcome back to the Hirsty channel, Ty here is here, I hope you had a fantastic week, happy April 2020. In this ongoing lockdown, I think we all face a similar situation, we all sit at home on our phones, tablets, laptops, we get served ads to buy stuff online. Online sales are no longer the dominion of big brands like Amazon. Creators like myself, small business owners, entrepreneurs can sell their products to their audience via platforms like Shopify, Teespring, Studio Cafe, I think that was the other name, or Studio 6. Those platforms encourage us to create products for our audience. Among all of those creators, one stands out. Peter McKinnon. Peter McKinnon went and skipped the entire t-shirt phase and he started creating unique products for his audience. And from his experience, people like myself, individual creators and entrepreneurs and small business owners like you can learn a lot. Let's do this. If you're new to this channel, this is actually an episode from a series of videos about interesting and inspirational people who we can all learn from. And if you're curious to check out more, here is the link to the entire playlist. And if you're interested specifically in the topic of monetizing your audience and merchandising, well, check out the very special video about this creator who completely killed it in their own industry and they leveraged their YouTube channel and the audience on YouTube to monetize millions and millions of dollars and create an additional value through an amazing quality top-notch product out there. Great new house, by the way, Jeffrey. Now, back to Peter McKinnon. Peter McKinnon is an interesting creator. I've been subscribed to him, I think, for about two or three years now, and I've learned a ton from him, especially from the realm where he started at, because at the very inception of it, it was him in his kitchen with a few thousand subscribers talking about different camera and photography tricks. And now fast forward those several years and all of a sudden he has this amazing dream dedicated studio setup that he just finished building out. He has almost I think 4.5 million subscribers and his content does range in between the technology, photography, videography, personal vlogs, and a lot of interesting topics and themes in between. On his path to success, Peter, like many other creators, had amazing opportunity to make it a main source of living. He had a chance to monetize whether it was his content directly by creating ads through Google and getting that AdSense revenue from YouTube, whether it was brand deals with specific brands and creating very specific topical videos or just inserting that brand within his video content. Merchandising is usually the third best option when it comes to gaining that additional revenue from your channel. And well, if you've been on YouTube a lot lately, or in general, if you've been on YouTube platform for the past couple of years, you've seen enough of those commercials or ads within the videos with creators talking about their t-shirts, their baseball caps, their sweatpants, and all that cool stuff. It's no joke, honestly. If you think about it, bigger creators like David Dobrik, he makes north of $100,000 in profits on every merch drop. So this is not something to sneeze at, but in that world of t-shirts, like how many t-shirts can a single viewer buy before they tap out of their own budgets? And usually those purchases are not that cheap. So in the realm of all the different types of merchandise, Peter took a left turn and went in a completely different direction. Starting at a high level and going further into specific examples, I can distill Peter's approach into three simple steps. First and foremost, it was leveraging his own passion. Second, leveraging his audience passion and finding the match between the two. And third, focusing on limited releases rather than trying to build a year worth of supplies or dragging out the whole production development. When it comes to his passion, right before YouTube, Peter actually had his own small accessory and leather goods product. He wanted to develop that kind of a brand. It, didn't succeed, but now it's funny to see how it all comes to the full circle because he brought that passion to leatherworking, to smaller accessories, to pens and notebooks and different other things. And he created that small passion bubble within his bigger YouTube brand. His audience passion, interesting thing is that when you have a particular audience coming back to your channel over and over again, frequently they do not necessarily come back for yet another video about the camera tricks. They come back for the match in passions and interests in life that they have and you have as a creator or small business owner. I can see on the example of Peter how his audience resonates with what he talks about. He can forever talk about patina. I didn't even know that that word exists, but patina apparently is a real word. It's applicable to the leather working. People out there love it and hey, now I learned it because I'm passionate about some of the other topics that he had. So that connection is super important. And the third and the final ingredient, making sure you use those limited drops to your advantage. 
A, they provide you with the ability to create something and spin up smaller batches of products rather than waiting for months to deliver like a full palette of things. And the other part of it is the urgency, the urgency from your buyers to purchase that product. Because at the end of the day, if you know that there's gonna be only a limited set of that product in question, you are likely as a buyer to pull the trigger and put that credit card. So you as a small business owner or creator have to combine those three ingredients. Your own passion, because you can easily tell when you're passionate about something. It's hard to be passionate about sweatpants, but if you are, hey, great, all the power to you. Your audience passion, you have to be attuned to what your audience want and limited drops because it makes you more nimble and agile and it also creates a sense of urgency when it comes to buying your product. Now let's drill even further and talk about very specific examples. Coffee, backpacks, neutral density filters for your camera lenses, the breast pants, breast dyes, gold-plated coins, leather notebooks, special leather ties for your zippers. No, this is not a random set of words and products that I just read aloud. Those are the actual things that Peter McKinnon produced for his audience in limited drops. It was way better of an approach than taking your logo, slapping it on a t-shirt and ship it out to your customers or in this case, your subscribers. Here, Peter spent time developing smaller, interesting products that he was passionate about. His audience resonated with it, so he would try out things in smaller batches, rinse and repeat over and over again. And with each new product, it's amazing. Like right now, he's working on, I think, whiskey glasses. That dude is all over it. He's really passionate about what he's producing. And it tells both in the content, the quality of the product, and on the third and very major factor, it definitely works for the audience like myself. I can attest to that with two purchases that I've made of Peter McKean's branded merchandise. Ugh. This amazing backpack, I know it's pretty big. This is my new camera bag. This thing is amazing. I'll link in the description the video where Peter fully goes uh, through this bag and talks about how they created it and all that fun stuff. Like this thing is amazing. And the thing about buying something from the person who is really passionate about the product is that you know they really cared about making sure this is a top-notch quality. The big testament there is my prior camera bag is about, I think, six or seven times less expensive than this one. But the quality, the build, the protection that it provides to all of my video equipment was well worth it. Second item that I purchased from Peter was the neutral density filter. So these are like sunglasses for your lenses and you would use them in the highly bright environments with the lenses that take in a lot of light. And again, amazing product, love using it, and also wasn't necessarily that cheap. And Peter, if I have to make one complaint, you made this amazing lens cap. Like, look at this, guys. Like, this is the level of detail that he puts in when he works on the product. And this lens cap doesn't fit within the lens bag that came with your backpack. Like, you legit... <sighs> you'll like rip it apart. Like I'm not even gonna try. So you have to use one of these side ones. I don't know if that's what it meant for, but you can see guys, if you've never heard about Peter McKinnon, this is the biggest complaint that I have about his product that they're not necessarily 100% matching between the two, but the quality is amazing. The approach is great. The passion is there. So me, although I spent a little bit more than I wanted, I'm 100% happy with my purchases. Now, how does this apply to you guys? If you're running your own business, you're on maybe individual entrepreneurial, small side gig, or you're a creator like myself or like Peter, well, you really have to think about those three lessons. And they might be pretty straightforward when you hear them, but so many people don't follow them completely. They either produce stuff that they're not passionate about and you have to be passionate about the product. It will show right away. And because of your passion, you will also know what good product is. Because Peter knows so much about certain leather products or certain metallic goods or the camera backpack helps him understand what really would work for creator and what will not. Same thing goes to your audience. You have to stay in tune with your audience. You have to listen what they need. You have to talk to them and hear their feedback back. And if they say something about negative things about your product, take it seriously. Make sure you address that because they are the ones who will support you and spread the word about your product beyond that small group of your personal audience and into the general mass that will provide the most amount of revenue for you. And finally, I know I use the small batch example as a way to drive urgency, but the other great thing is it allows you to be agile. Instead of, again, standing a million dollar production facilities, if you can 
produce something in smaller batch, test it in a few hundred sales, see what the feedback was, change it, test it again, produce something else. It allows you to be nimble in the marketplace. It allows you to change things, both from the perspective of the cost, the type of products or ingredients and things that go into that particular sale, as well as just in general, helps you understand where your brand lies in the realm of that merchandising environment. So use those three examples. Think a lot about how can you position yourself in a unique way, stay away from that t-shirt, sweatpants kind of example, and I think you will be that much closer to the financial independence, both as a small business owner or individual entrepreneur. Have you heard about Peter McKinnon before? Do you agree that his approach to merchandising is way better than the t-shirts? And what are other ways by which small businesses and maybe entrepreneurs or other creators that you follow monetize their audience and created something unique to address both their passion and the passion of their audience. Share links and examples in the section below. I think this is great, although I'm looking ridiculous right now, but I want to reward creators and small business owners when it comes to creatively approaching their audience, not just shoving some random usual things that everyone else does. No, really applying the passion, really respecting the interests of your audience. I think it creates way better experience for everyone creators, small business owners, entrepreneurs, they get to reap the benefits and make a little bit of money. We, as the consumers, we get to enjoy awesome products. The rest of the world, I think they see the competition and they have to step it up and they have to produce something equally as good. No, before, had to put it down before I make my outro. Thank you very much guys for stopping by. If you're new to this channel, go ahead, hit the subscribe button and check out the videos in the backlog. And if you're already a subscriber, thank you very much for stopping by. As always, let me know in the comment section below what you thought about this video and I will see you all next Saturday, 10 a.m. Eastern on this very channel. Okay, quick update to last week. I did stick to my word. We went from the... Ah, for those of you who have not seen the last week's video, I'm taking advantage of this lockdown, introducing my oldest son to Star Wars and Marvel. So we were done with Star Wars last week. This week we were watching Avenger movies. So far so good. I think his favorite part was Hulk versus Hulkbuster, which do not disagree. Awesome scene in the Avengers. And we're going to try to go into the realm of the end game and see how he responds to that. Other than that, I'll keep you guys posted. Stay safe, wash your hands, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.